Hello Facebook Live, this is Alexandra from Olenka's Kitchen and today we have a returning guest. Hello Isabella, so 5D and beyond with Olenka's Kitchen and Isabella Greeny. Hello. Hi, how are you? Uh, a little tired for the last two days, but we're going to be talking about this. And how are you? Hot? Well, it's warm, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of people are uh, experiencing uh, energetic stuff that's related to uh, the, the celestial event that we're approaching. Mm -hmm. The energy started yesterday already. I personally started experiencing uh, symptoms. Uh, or the sensations, you know, when the celestial events approach, a lot of people experience different things. And the, I'm not in this, uh, into astrology, so I don't, I'm not really know about all of the astrological background to the uh, solstice, uh, not solstice, the solar eclipse that's coming uh, on Tuesday, but. I'm more like how to deal with it mm -hmm. kind of person. And so I started observing that um, yesterday already, all of a sudden I'm thinking about things like from my childhood that I have never thought about or stuff just coming up uh, from the bottom of the barrel, so to speak. And I've done a lot of energetic and emotional clearing already on myself. So. Um, Mine is very minor, but I'm noticing that that's showing up. And if that's showing up, that means it's an invitation to clear so we can move into the next level. Um, everyone moves into the next level, regardless of where they are. The people who are not really very emotionally processed, uh, experience, and they usually experience an intense symptoms. Symptoms are more intense. The, le the less clear the less uh, processed you are the more uh, the stronger the symptoms and so fatigue is very common uh, emotional outbreak the irritability is very common feeling out of sorts is very common out of focus um, for me personally I, I'm noticing in my meditation like why am I uh, thinking about this so I guess I need to look at this in my own experience uh, luckily I've done so much work that mine is pretty gentle nowadays but yeah being tired is um, normal at this time and you're not the only one a lot of people are noticing that the energy is already here we're in the gateway they're uh, saying that it's a um, Syrian gateway that the connection with Sirius is getting more serious <laughs> <laughs> and um, I saw pretty much every session that I did this week, this past week or this week until today um, was all related to interactions with the Syrian races and Syrian guidance and all of that. So uh, yeah, you feel tired, that's, that's a part of it, you're feeling the energy. So we'll talk for an hour, right? Like yes. You said. And yeah, I, I normally, like, anything that goes over an hour, I'm like, no, I can't, I can't deal. <laughs> an hour is plenty, <laughs> I feel. Let's just see if we have any questions I can answer. Yes, so. and, and I, I think, you know, then I can have you back another time because, you know, I always have questions for you. So first, uh, this question comes a lot. And after the last interview, people were asking, let's talk about past, present and the future. So it doesn't exist. It's only the present. Like, you know, w what's going on? Because <laughs> how to deal? Well, this is a very timely question. I actually uh, yesterday, was it yesterday or the other day, I had a session uh, where I accidentally, <laughs> accidentally meaning I don't channel the saints. Mm -hmm. I only channeled uh, Saint Germain once in my entire experience. I channel, uh, I interact with cosmic races in sessions to channel cosmic races in sessions. But here, uh, I, uh, Saint Francis came in, which is funny. Um, and he talked about the past because the client that I was working with is, is really now digging into her past and remembering on her, all of her childhood trauma and everything, and, you know, like through standard type of therapy, that's what they do. And uh, 
the guidance that came in from that same dimension was very interesting. I will translate it into modern terms. So pretty much he said, take your focus off of the past, otherwise you will keep recreating the past, otherwise you only have access to the past. The, the brain is just a recorder. It, uh, it cannot give you anything new. It just keeps repeating the old stuff over and over and we're focused on the old stuff. We are unable to move forward. And this now, the opening, the, the uh, eclipse gate or gateway is the movement into the new. And then he said, uh, or the channel and said, uh, use the information that you get from the past as a database to understand or da database of information to understand how you're creating your future or your present because majority of, of people create their present from the subconscious space and keep recreating the same patterns over and over and uh, not even aware of that that's the unawakened or unconscious way of creating things so uh, that came up and, and basically the, the past is just a set of props to understand of how to uh, deal with the present moment and then uh, focusing on the present moment continuously assists us to uh, direct ourselves better so we stop recreating stuff from the past or from past, past traumas from old energetic imprints, all of that plays uh, a role in our... And so when we, when we understand that we're the creators of our reality, taking that information from the past out of the blind spot always is always very useful. So uh, I might have just deviated into what I do here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what exactly did you mean by uh, like the past? What exactly did you want to look at in the past? I mean, because it's like other reincarnations or like if you deal, you know, you do the the entities removal, but you also look at other reincarnations. So like if if we were, you know, other Cleopatra or whatever, I don't know, Caesar and whatever, like right. it's in the past. So no, it's not like in quantum is happening actually now. So yeah. where is this past? Well, the past is a set of stories, mm -hmm. basically, you know, and everything expands from the present moment the present moment carries infinite amount of connections to other present moments that are happening simultaneously in one of these you might be clear pattern like you said in a different one you might be caesar or whatever or you might be a farmer somewhere in the middle of nowhere it doesn't matter but all of these things are interconnected and all of these things are feeding into the present moment. So when you change the present moment for yourself, when you start making different choices, when you change your frequency, when you raise your vibration, uh, when you do the emotional clearing work in the present moment, you influence all of the timelines that are connected to your present moment, which might be considered the past. And the same thing from the past, because we actually can communicate interact with and heal any aspect of ourselves on any timeline within that infinite soup of reality mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, consciousness is uh, that consciousness is that's where <laughs> um, all right so does this take you anywhere does this answer the no, question no it, it's great I uh, after doing the the galactic uh, Cassiopeian connection with you after that I've done a lot of hypnosis and I'm oh, really? no more no longer have allergies so allergies were gone so we work on no. that it was amazing I last week I finished the job so I'm free so I'm moving along with my stuff so this is what I, I want to talk about like healing so when people come to you and they want to heal and then they have you know different issues like so you work on ancestral and baggage like uh bloodline like stuff from childhood but i just feel like sometimes for my own healing i feel like sometimes people identify themselves like with the victim like maybe oh i was yeah. abused in the childhood like you know uh, by my parents or whatever and this that's why i feel like sometimes the regular 
psychotherapy may not work because people go like every week they lie, lay down on the couch and they reliving the, you know going back yeah. to the past and like what you do and i think what's hypno what, what hypnosis did for me it was phenomenal because they actually like went to the root and they and they we found the problem and we fixed the problem and then we reprogrammed the mind which i right. know you love joe dispenza like bruce lipton you know they talk about this how the environment and we can change our like reprogram their mind we have to take something out and put something in otherwise we're gonna ha have the same stories like that's what right. i'm going back about the past so what's your point what's your perspective on that well i definitely support that 30 years of therapy talking about the same issue takes people nowhere and i also uh know that half of healing is becoming aware of how we are operating and all of that goes back to childhood so i i generally give uh, an exercise during the sessions or for the ones who need it um, I give an exercise uh, finding the match between the emotional state in childhood and emotional state in the present day. And after that, I believe that through meditation, you can assist yourself and shift yourself in a different state of being completely. And I developed this process and I follow it myself. And I also offer it to my clients. And it does not take 30 years of talking about the same thing. As a matter of fact, uh, the less you talk about it, the better, because again, where we recreate uh, from the point of focus, where we are focused at, that's what that we're going to experience more of the same here. So this is very, very clear. Um, and uh, the main part of awakening, or what's called awakening, or becoming, is, be is moving from the state of a victim into the state of creator being the owner of your experience understanding that yeah we had some influence before we recognize that we had that influence mm -hmm. and after we do we uh, we have an opportunity to make choices mm, that are different than the choices that were coming from the blind spot I see a lot of people saying hi somebody's asking do Cassiopeians wear gems I saw a huge ruby or garnet square ring does it make sense of course i mean if you feel i feel like if you are attracted to something yes no matter like what you are like just follow your bliss follow your joy follow your passion what do you think when you so this was my other questions now these days so many people like channeling when you go on youtube or, or, or whatever you see all these people channeling different beings and it can get can, can get confusing like with diets you know when people come to me as a health yeah. coach like what diet is good for me i'm like always you know follow your own intuition because it's like yeah the information sometimes can be contradicting even so what right. do you say about this when like you give somebody you know um connection and like what's next um, I don't know what you're asking as far as what's next, but I know that um, I only started channeling recently over, I don't know, less than six months probably I'm channeling. And before that, I used to just call that higher aspect to do uh, an activation for mm -hmm. us. And then I noticed that they want to say something. <laughs> And they want to share the message for the clients after the activation, meaning, oh, we just reconnected, we just reconnected your DNA uh, back, uh, that dormant DNA that we all carry. We all carry DNA from all over the galaxies, not, not only this galaxy, from many different galaxies. And so when we reactivate the DNA, we uh, get the new abilities that are available to us through the, that DNA reactivation. And very often, they, exact uh, cosmic representation of that DNA would speak and share. And uh, I've observed that that has been very accurate for people who are in my sessions, but I don't just share um, channel just to channel, you mm -hmm. know, just to talk on, on YouTube. So no, I'm not talking to... about you. I'm talking about, you know, like other people. I just feel like it's very getting very popular now. Everybody's you know, I'm not talking. Yeah, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm talking about discernment, like where, you know, how do we discern the information, you know, because, yeah, there's a lot yeah. of sources. What's the truth? Is there absolute truth? Oh, well, I think it's true for every individual mm -hmm. person separately, because every individual person is connected to their own timeline. 
And so whatever matches their own timeline is their truth. Mm -hmm. I think we have how many 8 billion different truths on, on this um, planet, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah, if you look at it, uh, if you look at yourself or your neighbors or me, we all live in our own separate worlds in a way, but at the same time we're sharing consciousness uh, as humanity at large, if humanity overall. You know, so yeah, following that feeling that whatever feels right, sometimes I would open something on YouTube uh, and be like, well, or something with a lot of people send me stuff. I'd be like, oh, you have to see this. And, and I'd look at it. I was not drawn to it myself, but sometimes I would open it and be like, oh, you know, that totally does not resonate with me. And I do not need to see it if it didn't come through my own selection which means i'm matching the energy here or my own state of being with what uh kind of material is out there then it's not for me and it's the same for other people exactly you know if you are um coming across something and it resonating with you uh and it feels good when you start listening to it then it's yours and it doesn't matter if everyone else says that that's wrong it matches your frequency at that present moment and you might grow out of it in a while you know like Bashar for example I used to listen to Bashar 24 7 uh, for the first couple of years I was going through this awakening process now it doesn't do anything for me anymore you know because I just recently listened to I think someone sent me something uh, you have to see it and, and I started listening I was like that's all old information but firstly a secondary I don't resonate as much I mean he's accurate and he's right but ah my mind is elsewhere my state of being is elsewhere now so uh, yeah just just feel it feel into it see what what works for you and if Ruby feels good yeah mm -hmm. go ahead wear whatever feels good if it may, if it makes you happy, joy is the frequency that gets us into higher dimensional states. So, uh, you know, if it feels good, let's do it. And 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 I mean, that's what you do. You you stay in meditation. That's how you connect yourself. You know, with you know, you find like your peace, and then you connect with the beings when you're working with clients. So, I feel like there's no better time to. Yes, the diet is very important. The, everything is very important but i think like going within it, this is like the most important time because the clips the, the we you know the 5d the, people calling the event or whatever the beyond the cosmic whatever people are saying uh what do you think that meditation is the key to i, I kind of, i'm kind of like a meditation doctor because mm -hmm. for every for every anything that people ask me how do i do this how do i fix that how do i <laughs> for me it's like always meditation 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 because i know that meditation changed my life it gave me access to uh, my own self to my own health and well-being and abundance and also to uh, what's now considered supernatural abilities i'm actually experiencing a whole array of different abilities that I did not experience before or they kind of build upon themselves and expand and grow and the next video I'm gonna put up online on YouTube I already recorded it uh, next week is about uh, supernatural abilities that I myself now have which I never used to have and never even suspected that it's possible and that matches the strands of DNA that we activate so every person carries a set of abilities that are matched within themselves through the DNA strands that are dormant inside of them. And so uh, people all have access to supernatural abilities, but they do not all have the same supernatural abilities because the supernatural abilities match the DNA strand. So uh, you would be leaning towards something that... Uh, is activated within your DNA that's related to a specific cosmic race. Um, I don't really exactly know uh, my own specific cosmic race. I know I'm connected to the whole uh, array of things and uh, 
so I have a whole array of different abilities that are coming on and so my interest now in meditation as well can I teach myself or can I experience other things um, that I have not done or experienced before and it's happening more and more like when we did session uh, when we did our session you and I I don't think I was channeling back then was I I don't think so mm. Yeah, I don't remember that I was channeling for you, and now I'm channeling for people. And then also, I just recently had an experience where I uh, finished the meditation at night, and then I got up, it was still dusky, kind of dawn, what, dusk? No, not dusk, dawn. dawn. So it was like earlier, uh, early in the morning when the sun is about to come out, so it's kind of grayish outside, and in the house and I walk around and I close windows uh, in my house uh, after the meditation so you know it doesn't get so hot in the house when once the sun comes up so I did that I came back to bed uh, and then I noticed that I still have my mask on so my eyes were completely uh, blocked or closed but I could see very clearly uh, everything that was around me in the windows and I walked from room to room and I had no idea that I still had the mask on so the third eye mm -hmm. while I was experiencing this was called supernatural vision so the third eye was uh, on for actual vision while the physical eyes were closed I have the same thing with uh, the ability to smell like all the psychic smell and there are a whole bunch of other things that I've recently just realized that are happening and I'm within my own reality. I'm like, yeah, you know, that's just normal, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm now curious, can I develop uh, or what else can I develop by choice as far as um, this kind of abilities? It's fascinating, I think. Uh, so I'll share a little bit of that in my next YouTube video. That, that's awesome about you, not, you know, not even know that, not knowing that you didn't have you know that you were that seeing I, in the dark. Were that... closed, and then I walked around yeah. with the mask on and could see very clearly. It was a little gray, but mm -hmm. I was thinking, well, it's a little gray because that's the daylight kind mm -hmm. of. You know, day is just beginning and the sun is not up yet. So yeah, it's a little different spectrum of vision. It's not exactly like when we use our eyes. It's a different spectrum of vision, but it's vision nonetheless. So it's phenomenal. I, I was. <laughs> I was blown away myself, like, whoa, that's happening now. <laughs> All right. That's so cool. Did you ever do like sun gazing, you know, like looking at the sun, at the sunset and sunrises? No. Oh, no. Well, I heard about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that, oh, as far as I know, that's a recommended practice. For Panyol a lot Duan of and yeah. do this, yeah, for activation and just for connecting. and. Altogether, being up at sunrise and connecting with the energy that helps the body to be healthier. And uh, there's a general Ayurvedic belief that um, living within the natural rhythm of the of nature is better for your health and well-being. So, yeah. Oh, I love. I I stare at sunsets all the time because. Uh, where I live, yeah. I, I always say, I always say hey, it's better than Kansas. <laughs> Kansas is known for wonderful sun uh, sets, but here the type of sun, the color, the colors, and the vision right from my house is mind blowing. And I do sunrises for special occasions. You know, I I'm still kind of snoozing through sunrises, but. Very often I'm finishing the meditation right before the sunrise, so I'll stay up and, and take a look at, at the sun coming up. And then I'll sleep a little bit and then I start the, uh, the work that I do. So how many hours do you sleep a night? I don't know. It depends. Uh, I'm not really focused on um, sleep all that much. Sometimes I, like during the uh, celestial events like this, when you, when you, when you do an emotional processing and you are exposed to the energies and things are um, some noise here I'm hearing <laughs> sounds like a storm I know that's not in my reality though we, we're tapping into parallel reality yeah, I mean like today the weather really... was very strange but 
Um, I thought that like someone was breathing very heavily into it. Yeah, microphone. I don't know. I'm, I'm like, maybe there is a storm Ooh, outside. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I was actually going to the pool today, and then like looks like the storm was coming. I'm like, okay, I'm not going. Then I said, going again. Then this looks like the clouds were coming. I'm finally, I'm like, I'm not going. And then they cleared up. So uh, yeah, yes, I think because of the eclipse, the weather can. Yeah, it's 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 clear now. Something was in well. There. The weather is not necessarily natural anymore, mm. and we we'll know that, and it's a whole different subject here. But uh, like I started saying that sometimes, and I always recommend the people who took sessions with me uh, very often tell me that they have to sleep more, and that's natural because you're processing an energetic adjustment. The entire population is processing an energetic adjustment during celestial events. And so that's when people sleep more, feel more tired. Uh, a lot of people experience uh, like that they need to take afternoon naps when they never do. And, and it's very possible on Tuesday, say, when we have the solar eclipse. Um, but generally, I kind of I get my seven, eight hours in uh, in portions. So yeah, I you don't get like one and... kind of like me with my cats. They wake me up. <laughs> Yeah. I think I should start doing meditation like you. Yes, because they exactly. wake me up four o'clock one every morning. Four o'clock. She like. Oh, she's telling you like, hey, that's that's your that's your Lyran or Lyran. Actually, she's the, there. So she's the other one, and then the other one comes. Yes, she's. Uh, yeah. And now I have three cats outside the feral cats, and now there's another one, black one, and I call him the shadow because he's very scared so now i basically have three inside three outside i'm like six cats like yeah i'm like a cat lady oh we're turning into the cat lady yes yeah, so, i mean I, lo I love cats but sushi the, is the lion he's the you know with like the lion and the other one are all like black so it's interesting he's like the king like nice. the lion king but the whole that that whole lyran collective is yeah. uh following you all the yeah, way here yeah the sure. cats love me i mean all animals love me but somebody said something so in spirituality one side doesn't fit all no it doesn't yes we it absolutely no. does not fit all well i don't think any thing fits anything really yeah it, it's very it's interesting because it's very individual for everyone at the same time like I said, we're all sharing consciousness at the, all the time. And I think maybe this is why our the field of consciousness and the field of knowledge and the field of experience is so rich because we're all feeding into it, not only receiving from it simultaneously, but also all feeding into it our, our own individual experiences. But there is such a thing as the shared field of knowledge and consciousness that humanity carries or humanity is living within so yeah and that expands and expands into uh higher dimensional shared consciousness where the races are uh, aware that they're sharing consciousness Hum humanity is sharing consciousness but we're not fully aware of that um majority of people think that they're super just separated within their own individual reality but that's not true uh but the more advanced you are as a, as a race uh, as a civilization, the, the better you understand that everything is shared. Uh, we all feed in that quantum field of information, simultaneously receiving from it and uh, sharing information and knowledge all across galaxies, really. You know, so w when you get that whole big picture, it's really fascinating. So, lady, when you when you work with different clients and you know, working with those, you know, removing the negative entities and mm -hmm. have you had any or like uh, galactic connections? Have you had any like surprises lately? Because uh, we are moving as a as a whole humanity, as a consciousness where you like, oh, I never had interactions with this race or this kind of being. Yeah. So, anything new? Um, the new thing that I started observing recently was um, seeing how many other higher dimensional races incarnated into the Anunnaki race uh, before they actually went to Earth. Because the Anunnaki race was considered a developing race, a developing world, and so similarly as we have different cosmic races inter incarnating into human or d contributing their DNA into the humans, it's the same exact way with the Anunnaki race. That was a surprise for me. 
um, just to find that, although that makes perfect sense if you think about it. Yeah, and I also encountered the type of being just yesterday or the other day, I encountered the type of being that I've never worked with, that I had to look for the habitat for it because um, I've never seen that kind of before. Uh, and wait, there was something else I was just thinking. Yeah, well, I forgot. <laughs> oh, sometimes it's just. I, I ask you about like the entities or like any new entities or any new beings. Oh, the, yeah. So. I experienced a new type of entity and I don't really know how to, ex to ex describe it until I work a little more with it than I would describe it. Right now I just can say that this week I saw the kind that I have never seen before. Uh, but I also realized that was shown through my work that a lot of entities that are living inside people, inside people's fields, especially if they came from outside of Earth they are unable to get out uh, so they just move from one human to the next mm -hmm. uh, because of the current scene it's like the earth is surrounded by that so they cannot get out and nothing can get in nothing new can get in but the old ones cannot get out either and so my understanding is that i was granted a permission to transport these out of this density so that without the permission to return and uh, well, that's that's held around Earth, but the ones that are already here, they can't get out. So uh, I kind of felt privileged in a way. Uh, they're very happy. They, they would express that, whoa, finally, <laughs> finally, I'm so glad that now mm -hmm. I can get a permission to get out and we have to really escort it. So me and the, the higher self team that works with me um, assist and um, escorting these entities out of um, not only human bodies and fields, but out of human reality, out of Earth's reality altogether. So that's a new realization for me that kind of came recently as well. So I have um, two questions for you. When you, so like, let's say you go to the supermarket or I don't know, you're just going to get coffee or something. I don't know if you drink coffee, but I don't uh, do coffee. okay. But <laughs> you're going to have tea or meet with a friend. You like right. in a public place, not in your house. Right. So you're going and you see. Do you see like you know like sometimes like those mediums, like medical mediums, that they can see like th that something is not right or like those entities around people. Or you have to have a permission, like somebody has to come to you and ask you for assistance, like your client. Because uh, recently somebody uh, was upset that like somebody did the reading on on them and then they didn't give them permission so i was like yeah. do we need to give permission to people yeah. read us no absolutely yeah absolutely um it's considered in our field in this profession it's considered unethical to read people without their permission so i actually uh made a an agreement with my own vision i guess uh, i don't really see what's up with people when i'm in public Sometimes it's so obvious mm -hmm. that it's so obvious that you don't have a choice, but looking at it that you see it, but I just, I would not go to the person and be like, oh, I need to help you. You know, that, that is a violation of free will. If they want to um, get assistance, they will reach out. Um, I also don't work with people whose partners, let's say, or friends are saying, oh, you know, I think that my friend, need some help i say no until until your friend reaches out themselves i i'm not working with uh, anyone without their awareness or or their permission because that's uh, a violation of of that rule but yeah sometimes um especially if my at the beginning of when i was just starting the meditations and when i did not quite have the control over my vision i'd go into a store and i would see something in every person it mm -hmm. was like walking through a zoo it was insane just uh, be like oh I, I would be looking away and closing my eyes be like oh i can't handle i cannot see i cannot look at all that um and so i that was the point when i asked i said i do not need to see all this because it's distracting and it's disturbing and i asked to uh, for my vision to be available to me only 
by choice and only when I'm doing the work. So now uh, that's where my vision is. Yeah, but it's possible. People do look, do look, do see, and do try to assist each other without permission, which is unacceptable, considered unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this, and so my other question is, when you are doing the meditation and you do working with the clients, when you are in your, you know, whatever you need to be, so oh, you have please. to, you have to be like in a space of non-judgment and no attachments, kind of to, Absolutely. to see, you know, oh, yeah. because you oh, God, you yeah. may go to places that you've never been before, right? So you have to like kind oh, of absolutely. clear clean yourself completely. Yeah, you have to go first. Um, I do the I do remote part of the work before mm -hmm. I have breakfast before I ha give myself a chance for my brain to wake up and start thinking in 3d terms I literally wake up just clear my body and then I do so, uh, that first part of the session in the morning so uh, you have to be in a state of complete neutrality and so that you can enter the space where all knowledge and all vision is acceptable for you. So, and also that you can work with people who, whose stories are disturbing, whose uh, entities are aggressive, so that you can be in the space of unconditional, just observe a state and very neutral and just talk to, to the entities or go through whatever you're going through with the clients without getting emotionally uh, distressed, disturbed or involved in any way. So yeah, getting yourself into the state of uh, neutrality and unconditional observer space, that's the most important thing. Um, and then I also get, I'm almost out of body when I'm doing this because I'm doing a lot of remote functions at the same time. So the first part of the session, I'm still talking, using my body while I'm simultaneously processing a lot of information. So I have this multidimensional brain function that can do many things and look at many things at the same time. Uh, but I am keeping myself partially in the body while partially in the field so that I can uh, perform all this function. So yeah, that's me. Did that's you ever work. came across like light language? I was just interviewing this, uh, my friend Lisa, and she does the light language. Did you ever came across? Well, uh, when I channel the, the beings. beings that come in for activations, it is light language. Mm -hmm. so it feels like music. Okay. It feels like it's telepathic mm -hmm. interaction. It's, it feels like when you hear music, you get a certain feeling right mm -hmm. that feeling is what i, I tr do my best to translate into language mm -hmm. so that i could speak and share that with with the client who is listening in 3d obviously right and their mind is receiving that message but it does feel like music uh it does well because the the races that we work with all interact telepathically light language where it's in sound mm -hmm and frequency it's the way of speaking that they don't necessarily have to use they use it uh just so that others can hear them or human beings and process it i'm under the impression that it's not necessary at all uh you just get the telepathic feeling because uh telepathy is like the universal language of of uh, all galaxies there is an outside of 3d is telepathic even a lot of people in this density have become telepathic, including myself. All of the interaction with animals is telepathic too. You know, the ones who do not have the ability to speak um, or did not develop the focus, communicational focus in with language or, or that link between communication and language as being the only expression form these people are able to be telepathic as well. A lot of autistic kids are telepathic. A lot of nonverbal children or grown-ups uh, uh, are telepathic. So that's quite available to human beings as much as uh, the galactic beings too. So uh, I have another question. So do you yeah. have any tips for, for us, like, you know, going 
transitioning to 5D, um, you know, I mean, you've worked with so many different beings, with so many different people. Do some issues overlap? I'm sure they do with your clients. Like, what are, str what are our struggles and how can we, you know, help ourselves? Is there any tips? Joy. Joy is direct line into 5D. So I would give you an example. Instead of saying, oh, I have to do something you switch it to I get to do I get to do that thing and that's exactly how you switch frequency and so that's the difference between a 3d approach and a 5d approach for example but uh, finding as much space within yourself that you can fill fill in with joy would give you access to like this 5d state of consciousness because 5d is not a location it's a state of consciousness i recently was listening to um the program on gaia tv about the super soldiers and the um randy white weidenheimer i can't pronounce his name sorry randy uh but he was expressing that even in combat the much higher rate of survival is with those who go into combat in the joyous, lighthearted state of being. That's why they sing that, many times. Yes, they like. Yeah, even even in combat. So if these people in combat are capable to main, of maintaining their frequency or their state of mind in the space of uh, lightheartedness and joyfulness i mean that is a contradiction in terms right the combat versus joyfulness but if even if i mean if they are capable of doing that we in our everyday 3d blah blah life you know we definitely are able to do that too so, so these are that's the main that's the main thing you know and then excitement proactive excitement like, ah, I'm so excited. proactive excitement gets you into higher frequency state of being but to sustain that long term to really embody we require peacefulness and so now with this with the with this at this time right now with the solar eclipse we're talking about embodiment the true embodiment of the state of being that was not really available to us before this is the main question that people ask in uh, that come to me and that come to other people how do i sustain i'll go into meditation i feel amazing i came back out come back out and i'm you know cooked out in a couple of hours what happens how to sustain that state so that state is more and more available the more work you do the more you connect, the more you're able to hold that connection uh, continuously. So that's the next level of embodiment. The next level of embodiment of the higher self into this vehicle, into this density, is what's happening right now on Earth. And you're going to see more and more people uh, representing that, really. Uh, so you will just look at them and be like, how come, how come, you know, all this, is happening but they're untouched because they're carrying that uh, frequency even if something comes up in their lives they still the consciousness state or the emotional state is still untouched so that's the next level of embodiment really carrying your uh, higher self state of being within your 3d reality that's the connection to into 5d and above too how about the people like you know they they, you know, you say joy, finding excitement, like they hate their job, they hate their life, they hate their, maybe they're not happy with the way they look, like with everything that, you know, like I know some of these, they just like so out. unhappy. So like, uh, like what, out. what do we do? Is this our, are we supposed to help them or like, you know, time to wake up. These people are waiting for crisis mm -hmm. that's going to kick them in their butts. So that they have no choice but to make changes mm -hmm. if the person is in that state of being enduring that state of being is not beneficial to anyone 
And so that's only going to get louder and louder and louder mm -hmm. until they have no other choice except to make uh, changes. And so that's awakening through crisis, which unfortunately is very common to humanity. Human beings hold mm -hmm. on to their discomfort for as long as they can because they feel that that's safety of some sort. You know, that is absolutely untrue, unfortunately. But a lot of people nowadays are um, able or understanding that discomfort is an indication that change is required. And so mm -hmm. a lot of people are going for change before uh, discomfort gets out of hand, really. You know, out of mm -hmm. hand, meaning, well, you've got three months to live. Oh, my God. So now I'm going to start looking for you know, the meaning of life. Before that, I spent 50 years doing nothing. So now, you know, it, it's discomfort means that it's time to awaken. It's time to make changes towards a different type of life, a different type of state of being. That's all. And, and, and life will give it to you. And I tell you something funny <laughs> happened to me. So my friend was telling me, like, I think for a year, Sign up for Pilates with me. You're going to love it. She just retired, so she was a teacher. Right. Sign up for Pilates. I'm like, I don't have time. You know, I've been I've been teaching for the last year in free schools, getting up at five in the morning, really four in the morning because of my cat. So I'm like, okay, one day I will get it and uh, like go for trial. So finally, a month ago, it was a mystery. I woke up in the morning and I had pain. I your back hurt. No, it? actually in my collarbone here and here, like oh. I dislocated. So I went to the doctor. He says, what did you do? What sport do you do? I said, nothing. I went to bed like this. I think maybe my cats did some, I don't know. He says it's impossible. <laughs> so he sent me for physical therapy. I did go and it was like, okay. I'm like, you know what? Let me try this Pilates, go for free class. I went oh. last week. I love it. I signed up. I'm going unlimited now. I want to go. I'm so sore. I'm like, I, I want to go twice a day. And I'm like, see, this is what happened. She says, I've been yeah. telling you for a year. And I'm like, why I didn't go? I, I'm like, I love it so much. See, that, that that's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, you, you well, get it. I had significant back problems, uh, pains for years mm -hmm. since I remember myself, really. Uh, Pilates, well, not only like changing the mm -hmm. state of mind, but on the physical plane, the Pilates was uh, what helped me with the back with back problems mm -hmm. significantly uh, back when I was still in New York City. And uh, yeah, life will give it to you mm -hmm. that you, if there is an idea and mm -hmm. a thought that you want to do something, but you're avoiding it and avoiding it and avoiding it, but the uh, the soul or the bigger mm -hmm. picture there is going to kick you into gear yeah. so you, you have no choice yeah yeah so and that's, that's funny. a wonderful that's a wonderful choice you know that's a wonderful thing to do yeah Pilates no I, I love it and i'm like why i didn't go before she's been telling me all the time i'm like see yeah. i guess now is the time but yeah i love it but anyway so I, i'm feeling much better how about destiny do you believe in destiny no no so there's no like we not uh, there is no like path or something like well there is a path but uh, a path has infinite amount of variations mm -hmm. uh and deviations and choices and so you kind of have a path but you don't have to follow it mm -hmm. that's what majority of people do <laughs> still in this you know on this planet uh you have certain predispositions, you have certain, you know, desires of the soul or mission of the soul. So if you find that, that's when life gets better. Or when you find that, that's when life gets better. And so you're fulfilling the, the uh, desire of the soul. But a lot of people don't do that. And so they, they come in and they die miserable. And that's just, uh, you know, that's just another typical type of experience. Uh, typical for the human race type of experience, but I don't believe in dense destiny. There is definitely genetic predisposition to things. There is definitely a recreation of conditioning, and so awakening really is like we spoke at the beginning. We talked at the beginning about this that um, awakening is really recognizing what's creating your reality, what patterns you're matching. And then 
changing out of that by choice deliberately once you become aware of that you can teach yourself in meditation once mm -hmm. again how to do things differently step by step six months to 12 months you're a different person or you you will be experiencing a different reality in such a short period of time you don't need 30 years of therapy to get, go through this all you need to do is become aware and then chip at it little piece at a time and and then that's it reality changes because we become conscious and we also record the new conscious signature into the subconscious and that becomes the mechanism that is creating our life's experience things are much simpler than we like to think here on this planet <laughs> in my opinion oh yes, de definitely my grandmother my polish grandmother always used to tell me like the truth is right there right in the front of your eyes but can you see it it's like it's very yeah. simple and i i'm like i didn't understand you know as a child but like now i'm like yeah grandma was right um because you know i'm about food but now i have a lot of friends who are breatharians you know they saying that they don't need food they calling on fooding they they don't need food they living like they really like going for like this fast i'm actually gonna try i'm gonna do some experiments now because you know i'm at home uh so what do you think of this i mean i know in other dimensions when we different bodies like me and cassie is like you know i i'm like transparent translucent but how about yeah. here on this or earth is it what do you think about being going breatharian i think that that's okay when you reach a certain frequency when your body is in a certain level of consciousness which mm -hmm. is frequency that when that frequency reaches a certain level you no longer need food or as much food because mm -hmm. you literally are self-sustained or self-sustainable energetic organism and so you can receive that from inspiration for your in a state of being from uh sunlight from air all of that right it's all energy and it's an exchange of energy so it's possible when people do it before they reached that state of consciousness i think it is it could be very um i don't know wary but it could be detrimental to the physical form because the physical form needs uh unless you're in that state of being the physical form needs sustenance i i can tell you that i experienced um a few times in my life so far that when I would be in the state oh let's just take an example when you're in a state of highest inspiration right in full passion and you are creating something let's say you are you doing creating your art or you're writing your book mm -hmm. or you're in you're in such state you cannot possibly eat at that time you forget correct? about food you forget about well, everything, everything yeah right yeah and you are so and you're so energized mm -hmm. and you don't want to sleep mm -hmm. and you don't want to eat right mm -hmm. so that's where you tap into that state of mm -hmm. consciousness that allows you to live without food and sleep but unless you're in that state of consciousness just go in there because it's popular mm -hmm. i don't think that that's a very good idea and of course i'm not saying that, well if it's something that you want to experiment mm -hmm. with and play with yeah by all means but um i watch the program on these people there's a program on gaia tv also about uh that and uh, some were successful with it and some got very ill and some could not get through it and uh, uh there's a whole documentary on on this movement and so you could check that out mm -hmm. what i think about it i think that if it's your natural uh if you right arrive there naturally and you observe that you don't not do not need sleep or you eat less and less and you are in great shape and energy and and you maintain in your body weight and everything go for it you know but um a lot of people on this planet also a lot of people who just start learning about spirituality uh they take things backwards mm -hmm. like oh let's give up all of the possessions because or let's resist all of the desires because 
uh, that bad or they'll make me spiritual. It's the other way around. When you, your consciousness reaches a certain level, you don't want these things that people are trying to, oh, if I, if I stop doing this, then I'm super spiritual. No, it's the other way around. You get into the state of consciousness where you're no longer a match to these desires. You're no longer interested in the same old things or you arrive in this space where you don't really feel like you need to own anything anymore. You know, and so that the desire to have possessions goes away naturally. It's the other way around. Mm -hmm. See, so I think with the with not eating, it might be very much the same thing. That's my personal opinion. No, I mean I agree, and I agree with all these diets. You know, different trends, and you know, it's like uh, again, not going, not looking outside, but looking within, because there, like we said in the beginning, there is no one fit for all, right? So right, yeah. follow your own, uh, whatever is serving you at the moment and things may change. So what works for you today right. may not work for you tomorrow. I know that it's almost, we've been talking almost an hour. So at the end, um, I want to know what's going on with you. Do you have any special events going on? Please, can you also tell people again what kind of sessions maybe you offer? And I can't, I just love your videos like on YouTube. I can't wait to watch the next one and like learn what, like, you know, what like journeys you had with people is just so cool. Like, I just love it. It's like reading like yeah. a fairy tale book, fairy tale book. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, very often the sessions are better than fairy tales. No, I, yeah, it's, 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 it's you cannot come up with this kind of yeah, stuff it's... and um i really could use a little assistance there as far as creating videos or visuals because me just describing it does not quite do it no, but then you're I doing a great job i thank you but i search i search and there are no visuals of that because not very many people have access mm -hmm. to these things but oh we just started so on the new stuff we just started or uh team light Mm -hmm. uh, Rion started this new fascinating uh, series, uh, the Cosmic Surfer mm -hmm. series, okay. and I was very excited uh, to have recorded with him. We recorded three episodes so far, and there probably be more where I can actually talk about stuff that excites me, the different cosmic races, what they do. Uh, so one episode was already published, and, and two more coming up. I started recording with Sci Spy TV finally, so I'll have my own channel soon. Cool. That's uh, subscription based, but it's only like five dollars a month. I mean, it's less than a cup of coffee, one cup of coffee per yeah. month, you know. So, um, but here's what happened with that. I went there and I thought, oh, I really need to. Uh, kind of bring it down so more people can understand what I'm talking about. So I started talking about uh, awakening and metaphysics and uh, awakening symptoms and all of the like mundane kind of stuff. And it was just not going anywhere. I kept stuttering. I could not get through those episodes. And it's going to be like an episode per week, every every week an episode. So we were recording a bunch of them at the same time. And um, I told... Um, her, Suzanne Ross, I told her, I said, that, I just don't know, it's just not going, I'm, I'm not feeling it. And she said, you know, I invited you, uh, not because uh, you could share this old information. A lot of people teach about uh, these things nowadays, it's beginner level, a lot of people can teach this. She said, I invited you because you have access to uh stuff that people don't really access very frequently and i want you to talk about that and so we got to the whole thing like rearranged itself and so we're going to next week we're starting all over again um because all these episodes were like oh, i can i cannot do that i cannot mm -hmm. talk about the old stuff anymore i want to talk about what i'm passionate about and so next week we're starting all over and uh, we, are, she's just going to ask me questions about the visions, about the exploration of uh, uh, multidimensional, otherworldly stuff, about the supernatural abilities, about all those things that make me so excited. And so that's going to come out uh, at some point, I guess, if we record it in July, so probably uh, mid-July or beginning of August, the 
episodes are going to start rolling out on, on that channel and that's SciSpy.tv, which is a uh, TV network really. Um, and then there's just so much uh, recording and sharing happening lately. So you uh, coming on board at this time too is very exciting. Okay. I would love Thank to you. have you and Rion and Alexander like one time, the three of you. Well, everyone is, we, we I know, it's wanted so busy. to do that yeah. <laughs> for a long time by now, but it just never comes yeah. together because each one, each one has their own uh, stuff going on and so much is going on. But I know. Yeah. When the timing is well, right, yeah. Otherwise, I will have right. I will have a, I love his bracelets. Yay! Yeah, so. very nice. Oh, and for you, I wanted to mention I uh, every time I look at your images that you just post on Facebook, you know the berries, the greens, the leaves, the foods. It's breathtaking so i wanted to ask you do would you consider or have you considered making an exhibition of that like the photography just oh, those like recently the cherries oh. right no, the I pictures didn't. the pictures are not only they're exciting they're colorful they're inspiring they're delicious they Everyone were just done with cell phone them. they were not even done with right. good camera but so take it put it in the frame and, and yeah. have an exhibition new york city could yeah. use a little bit of this uh lightness and, and joyfulness and the colors oh my god it literally every time i see your post it, it excites me so much so i'm i'm i was you know, I'm just throwing this out there for you. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of, yeah, that, that's a good idea. And now I have a lot of time, so I'm going to be doing a lot of food Creative and, yeah, show. and, yeah, and, and make, make the food. Yeah. So it's because before I was so busy with all these jobs, but yeah, now I'm like free. So, uh, and, and there are also, there are also establishments. I remember in New York city, like restaurants or coffee mm -hmm. houses or whatever, where you could have an exhibition and then you mm -hmm. could have that on their walls permanently. And so people will keep, will keep repeating like reliving that joy the mm -hmm. images that you produce just generate such incredible incredibly joyful feeling you know so yeah consider that that is that is that would be such a gift you know oh, bringing yeah. that light that brightness that joyfulness to people you know when they're not in new york we have a lot of really sad people everything's gray black you know bring some color in there Bring some juiciness. Mm -hmm. yeah. very nice. I love nature, and I'm so excited because now I have my little garden on my on my deck, and I have to, today I had first tomato. I have all these different things growing. I'm so excited. Peppers and strawberries and blueberries are coming. So I'm so I, I know, love I growing feel things. Smiling tomato was yeah. Really nice. Yeah, I'm like this is like the cutest. I didn't even know because the smile, you know, like the thing was underneath, and then I'm like, I knew it looked like a heart, but I'm like, wow, it's like a smiling heart. So yeah. the first tomato of the season. So, so well, cute. the sessions that I do, um, the main three different types are the medley session where you just learn about your uh, soul journey from cosmic to human and with incarnations and the gifts and purpose and mission and an idea of the soul uh, or potentials that are shown that are matching the present frequency the most. Then the quantum healing session is really a clearing session, clearing out uh, energetics, patterns, and or assisting to understand the patterns so you can clear them, and also clearing entity activity. And then there is a medley with the quantum healing, which does all of it plus the activation into the next level and DNA as well, and then the channeling from the higher self. So that's the most popular one, and um, I'm quite booked but yeah there's always openings and people are coming in with all kinds of strange requests lately like uh yesterday i worked with the person um she wanted me to speak to her father-in-law who passed on recently and she said that they used to watch my videos together wow. when he was alive and that it never occurred to them that she could work with me or anything like that. And as soon as I started thinking about him, he just showed right up. And so I had a very incredible interaction with him. And then she said he was saying he's traversing uh, the galaxies when he was 
passing out of the body he was actually sharing that feeling and then she said well now i want a session with you after we had that wonderful connection with this man and he said he went right back to uh to his spacecraft and she said that for her it was kind of strange hearing all this but as she watched more of my videos that it makes more sense and stuff so i'm totally connected with that person and i'm uh um you know I, we're gonna get more of him and more of his higher dimensional presence i'm sure it was just wonderful to feel his to find that connection so and then people are reaching out people whose children are not well and i always say that uh, when children are not well, we have to first work with the parents because mm -hmm. uh, where did that come from, right? Um, like aside from the regular sessions, the standard variety, I also am getting all kinds of uh, customized uh, offerings or requests. And so then I always work with each person just to create something for them within the means that I have, you know, within what I can have, what I can offer. And so that's at isabellagreen.com. And if you're interested in, in having a session with me, you can uh, just send me a session request form. I have a request a session form on each page there. Send me that and we'll start with the interview or we'll get to know each other. And then we'll schedule the actual work. So that's the process. So, so awesome. I really recommend it do it uh, uh, like people do it because you 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 will love it like you'll be so surprised and it's so great and then of course you have so many videos that i love watching on youtube and you have your facebook page are you on instagram no yeah. it just never went anywhere yeah. i kind of i i barely can keep yeah, up with i know with one, it's, it's, with one social platform yeah know. because then you have to respond i know it's like it takes a lot of time so when you're already so busy so uh, better yeah. put that energy towards your, you know, meditation and col connecting right there. So <laughs> and, uh, we will Thank share you. your information on different platforms. So very nice. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for that. So anything at the end you want to uh, like um, finish up with the 5D and beyond for the viewers? Well, we as a collective are moving into a whole different state of being. Uh, I feel very strongly, and a lot of other teachers and share, share the, are sharing the same kind of feeling and information that this particular uh, time right now, the uh, that solar eclipse and the new moon, that is like a door that's open or a gateway, more like that's open for us to really shift ourselves into the next. Base or next state of being and it doesn't have to be uh, huge take a little step take a little different focus take a different intention for yourself and anchor that and the more you do the better the life gets and the more of us awaken the more we assist the rest of the population and the rest of the planet in this beautiful journey that we're on um, I think that we're, <laughs> I hear that the uh, exhilaration is going to get stronger and, and stronger and stronger, that we're going to move faster and faster and process faster and faster, like now is not fast enough, but now while it's still relatively gentle, take advantage of this time with, uh, within the, in this energetic corridor and do something just set a different intention, shift your focus, move forward, embody that what is naturally and innately your own, the new human state. Thank you so much. And yes, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have you again and again because I just love talking to you. And yes, yeah, so happy eclipse, everyone. Yes. And uh, I'm going to post this on my YouTube and on my website, allinkleskitchen.com. And if you want to learn more about healthy food, you can find the recipes there. So thank you so much for taking uh, the time, you know, from your very busy schedule, you know, for to talking to me and to the viewers. And thank you so much. I didn't see all the comments, but then we will, I will, we will answer the comments later yes. to all everybody. All right. It's very hard to see them. So thank you. Have thank a good you. night, everyone. Thank and you, Alexandra. Yes. Bye. Nice bye, Isabella. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.